how's it hanging? How's it happening, everybody? You guys, always, this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. Hey, everybody, it's our first episode of August. It's August 2nd, 2022, and this year is flying by with so many great podcasts, great bands, and this one, if you like pop punk, if you want to have some fun with some great fast-paced pop punk with a band that released their first new music in almost 10 years earlier this year, this is going to be one for you. Also, Quite inspiring, if I do say so myself, from, from this band. But before we jump in, I want to thank support for this podcast. So let me ask you a question. Is crotch discomfort hurting your game out there with the ladies or with the, the men, I guess? Depends. Doesn't matter what you go for, but is crotch discomfort hurting your game? Fear no more because the king of crotch comfort, Manscaped, oh yeah, have spent two years designing the most comfortable boxer briefs out there. They're sleek, they're soft, they're comfortable, they're flexible. They're the brand new boxers 2.0 from Manscaped. And they take your balls to the royal ball throne because they actually have this patented little jewel pouch down there. I mean, they wouldn't have trademarked the jewel pouch if it wasn't to help you take your balls to the royal ball throne with the boxers 2.0. Manscaped, they're the leaders in below the waist grooming and they also have the good old lawnmower 4.0 so for trimming so you can wear the boxers and chill perfectly fine i mean I, I i've had bad underwear in the past let me tell you about that where it loose or it's like tight where you're like oh god or the stuff that like chafes the hell out of you. you're like hell no i don't want any of this fine underwear for me nah, not the easiest thing in the world but it it, it it actually um now is because we have the boxers 2.0 from manscaped i mean that jewel pouch let me tell you it helps support my boys, but doesn't constrict my boys, if you know what I'm saying. Also, make sure I don't chafe that much because, well, I got big freaking legs. But if I don't want to chafe as much, too, that's also where the Lawnmower 4.0 comes in. Ooh, look at that. It's their fourth generation trimmer, and it features the cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their skin safe technology, the advanced skin safe technology. And it's waterproof, has a 400K LED light. You want to see that right there. Oh, yeah, take a look at that. So you can see what you're doing down there. You can move it around. You can mold it around. But whatever you need to do, you can see. <gasps> look at that. And I got to tell you, that ceramic thing here for that advanced skin safe technology, it does totally reduce the amount of nicks that are down. I mean, you don't want nicks that are down there. I mean, nicks cut you like, ah, ah, ah. yeah, yeah, you don't want that. This totally prevents that so get the best care for your boys down there support them keep them cool all year long with manscape boxers 2.0 get the support there if you want to clean up down there make sure that crotch comfort doesn't hurt your game the lawnmower 4.0 from manscape is here for you and let this happen go support this stuff go get yourself a pair and you know go support your boys and get 20 percent off on free shipping by using our code c p P at manscaped.com link is in the description of the podcast the code description of the podcast as well so go and do that thank you manscaped we are also sponsoring the when we were hungry music festival happening out in las vegas on october 20th and 21st of 2022 memes and the dreams pancakes in the pit you want to know all about it go to corporate podcast episode number 290 where we talk with mal and will from when we were hungry music festival we talk all about this stuff get you in the know of what's all going on and how this all started and why you should support this stuff on top of that their lineup is almost fully out right now tickets are on sale so go and do that you can check out bands like modern day escape like saving vice like along came a spider like palisades like varsity like outlier so why do i mention those six bands because all six of those bands have been on the podcast before i cannot wait to see all six of those bands at when we were hungry festival does that mean i'm gonna be there yeah you better believe i'm gonna be there pancakes in the pit memes in the dreams find the guy in the corporate Rush podcast t-shirt that's gonna be in the middle of the pit the whole entire time wearing a milwaukee brewer's hat come say hi and we'll mosh together we'll have some pancakes together maybe a drink we'll have a good time so come out to las vegas nevada october 20th and 21st for the when we hungry music festival the first ever when we were hungry music festival tickets on sale now when we're hungry festival.com link description of the podcast for you go get those tickets pancakes in the pit memes in the dreams now to our feature presentation so on this episode i have shane from the band with the punches on the podcast with the punches did not release music for nine and a half years and they released their discontent ep 
at the end of May of 2022. So we talked with Shane all about, you know, what happened during those nine and a half years. What was the reason for the the lull or the hibernation of the band? Not hiatus, more like a, a nap, you know, hibernation. Talk about the music, talk about the inspiration behind the music, and also the inspiration that doesn't matter how old you are, you can always change things around and do something that you really want to do. Doesn't matter where you are in life, doesn't matter how old you are, you have the ability to do it. So are you guys ready for this incredible episode? Because I am. <laughs> Let's go! Yeah. Whoa, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression Podcast. There's been times in here where I've thanked the Instagram algorithm for showing me so many great bands, and this is one where I have to thank them again because if it wasn't for an Instagram algorithm ad that popped up with this band, I would have never maybe have found them, but thank you. So this band, Pop Punk, if you like it, you're going to like this stuff. This band was out of the game for about nine and a half years, and they came back this year with a brand new EP called Discontent, which came out right around Memorial Day weekend, right around the end of May, and I can't wait to talk all about it because I started listening to EP, I'm just like, this is like dynamic pop punk is all hell, it goes over so many different ways, I can't wait to talk about it, so please welcome Shane from the band with the punches to the podcast, so Shane, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. Hey Kev, thank you so much for having me, man. Thanks for being on, man. How's everything been, like been going in your neck of the woods? You know your realm of life as of good. recent. Yeah, it's good. A um, uh, lot surrounding the release. Uh, so this the beginning of the year was really busy. I, I work a full time job as probably most musicians do nowadays. But um, yeah, so I've just been super busy. We've been able to get that EP out at the end of May. And um, just kind of riding the wave since then, you know, like trying to make sure we continue to ride the airwaves and get people to, uh, to, to check it out, you know, over the course of the summer. But, um, the, the busy work is slightly done, but, um, there's only a slight lull and then we're going to have to try and get back into the game again to keep, uh, keep momentum flowing, you know? Yeah. You don't want, especially coming back after what, nine and a half years, you're not going to want to lose out on any momentum you gain from the release of this EP along with the 10 year anniversary show for mutant league records, which I know you guys played with along with uh, another band that's been on the podcast with sell your scores. And I looked at that and I remember looking at the flyer for that. I was like, is there a way I can go to this show? And then of course look at the date. I'm like, I am completely like seven hours away from Chicago at that point in time. <laughs> Not happy about it. Yeah, it was a great show. I mean, um, mutant league has been amazing to us since, uh, since we've, uh, partnered up with them. And then, uh, the other bands on that bill were amazing. Uh, unfortunately, Will Met was supposed to be on, but they had a, a couple of issues, so they couldn't make the the show. But we played with Chief State um, and Settle Your Scores, and um, it was just like a it was a super fun show, man. It was it was we had such a good time. We made new friends uh, in bands that we we never played with before, and there were a lot of people there, a lot more than I even expected to be there. So it was a it was a really really cool thing. Um, but um, yeah, and like I said, all of them are great people and they're great bands, you know, so it was it was a pleasure to, even though it was only a one-off show, uh, it was a really, really fun, fun 24 hours over in Chicago. No, but I, every time I go down to a show in Chicago, it's always a fun time, so I totally agree with you on that, where I can just see, you know, just having that little bit of a, like, little bit of a run there, it's like, okay, go to Chicago, we're going to play a show, meet some great people, play with some great bands, have a great time, and then we're going to go back east, and then take it from there. So I'm glad yeah. you had a great time. Now, was this your first show since, you know, the, the EP release and since returning from that nine and a half year break? We actually played a couple shows that were kind of our quote unquote CD release shows um, or out EP release shows. We played um, one in um, New York, Poughkeepsie, which is kind of where our home base was. When we first started the band, we used to play a place called The Chance in Poughkeepsie, New York. And that was where we played our first show ever and where we played tons of shows when we were first like in our infancy as a band so we went back and played the, the old venue we played our first show at and it was super cool we packed it out sold it out it was awesome so so many old faces it almost felt like we went into a time warp back like like 12 years or 13 years ago when the band started so it was a really really cool experience and then um we drove up to boston and we played in boston with a, a bunch of really cool bands um keep flying was on all these shows these shows too, which um, our guitar player, Dustin, is he also plays guitar and Keep Flying. They're really close friends of ours. They're super fun. Pop punk, they have horns. They're a really cool band. So they played all the all three of these shows with us. But um, 
The second one was in Boston, uh, right outside of Boston. Uh, we played this DFW hall that was huge and awesome. We had a bunch of people show up for that show too. So that was really fun. And then we came back on a Sunday and we played in Asbury Park, New Jersey, which is right by where I live, um, right on the Jersey shore. Um, we played a place called the house of independence, which always treats us great and tons and tons of people there too. Like I could not have been, uh, more excited for how many people actually came out to see those shows. So we played three of those shows. And then afterwards, uh, we waited a couple of weeks and then flew out to Chicago for that, that uh, Chicago show. So those are the four we've played since the album's come out. So the four that you've played since the, since the album comes out, since the EP's come out, just everything has just gone incredibly well to, you know, like you said, playing in the first venue you guys really ever played at and then playing a couple others and packing them out as well, especially coming back from, you know, that long of a break. That's not something that's really heard of. In ter- uh, like unless it's like you know a band like you know i'm just gonna use like um just got an example like uh, like one of those like large legacy bands all of a sudden it's coming back like when they first come back like those first couple shows like they're packed it's i know a bunch of local bands where they do some of the stuff as well but when they go back in it's like you know the place is never really as packed but the fact that you guys were able to you know like pack these houses and just have everyone go nuts i mean that's that's something to really hang your hat on so that is something to really be proud of i honestly could not have been more i don't know i don't know if surprised is the right word but like i did not expect that many people to hang on to it for the past decade you know and um sure enough it, it it's been since the record came out not only have we had a great response at the four shows we played but just online and and, and just about the music in general has been super positive so we couldn't be happier about the results you know well, before even jumping in the new music, it's a lot of the reason why a lot of people are still going to come out to those shows, especially the ones that you played where you pack those houses, where some sort of connection with your sound and some sort of connection with the music that you guys had released in like 2009, 2011, 2012. And the fact that that emotional connection is still so strong and your connection with those fans is still so strong to the point where you guys can take an almost decade break, come back and, you know, just pack these places full, bring the energy and just have everyone enjoying themselves and kind of just in their absolute happy place in the middle of the crowd at, at that concert and just being fully present in the moment, watching you guys play live, feeling the music with the punches and just enjoying life for what it's worth at that moment. Like that's, that's something that's really hard to do and have that long of a staying power that most bands would absolutely kill to have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I give a lot of credit to Dustin again, our guitar player. He, uh, he is the one who basically, uh, runs all our social media sites and everything. And he, even since the get go, like back in 2008, when we were babies at that point in time, and we were like, uh, just starting up on like, like Instagram wasn't even a thing then. And, uh, like Spotify wasn't really a thing then he was like on MySpace and all those other sites. And, we would, he would uh, like text people that were interested in the band. And like, there was just like a, a, a personal connection, you know, like he made personal connection. He would answer anybody that messaged us on Twitter or whatever social site it was with genuine answers. It's like not something you'd see where like, you know, somebody else is answering for the band or it's a robotic like response for that thing. They were like, He's, there's a genuine connection there because he wants to personally talk to every single person that's interested in this band. And he's done that since the get go. And I mean, we all preach that at, at a high level because when we were kids, like being able to meet like somebody from a band you loved, whether it was like via an online whatever forum or if you saw him after a show, it was always just a really cool and exciting experience. You know, when I was a kid and I went to shows around here in the Jersey Shore, like, I'd meet people that I like loved, you know, like I went and saw H2O and some 41 and I had this old venue called the Birch Hill in New Jersey that doesn't even exist anymore. And we would, I, the starting line and uh, Midtown and census fail and armor for sleep. Those were all like New Jersey, the, the early November, all like Jersey bands. I would go see like all the time back in like the early 2000s. So like meeting people like that from those bands and like having some sort of personal connection goes such a long way because again, I still jam out on all that stuff. Like it's, it's, it's part of what I grew up listening to, you know, and I still have a respect for those bands. So um, I think we try to do the same thing for the people that listen to us. You know, we want to, to help cultivate this future of, we want kids to do this because they, see what we're doing and it inspires them to do it. Cause that's what happened to us, you know? Yeah. And being able to, especially online again, shout out to Dustin for that one, because 
that is such an important thing where so many people are going to reach out to you on social media. It is the way to communicate, especially when we went through the pandemic 2020, 2021, where, you know, everyone was locked in their house and all you had to connect with people was either your phone or your computer or anything like that, really. But it's something that's completely different when, you know, you reach out to your favorite band and you know this exactly from what you just said. And I know this exactly, too. It's so much different when you reach out to your band. If you don't get a response, it's like, OK, you know, you kind of expected that. If you do get a response, but it's just like you look through like the responses, everyone's like, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's just it. It, it just comes on such hollow ground. But if you respond with something that is genuine and just something unique for everyone, and you're actually, you know, taking the time to respond and build that connection to those people, that's going to be something that's going to build that emotional connection, become strong within them. And you're going to have a connection with that person to your music for life. I've been seeing this happen to many people. Um, there's a band from Australia right now. They're called Patient 67, metalcore band. I've had their lead singer, Tom, on the podcast before. Um, watching what he has done, too, where it's just every time I see him post something, whether it's a crazy meme, whether he posts on Reddit and, like, just ask people what they think about his music, what they think about this new song with this new album, everything. It's I read through those comments, and then I see his response every single time. And it's always unique and always different it always pertains to the subject at hand that the comments are made. So you're building up that connection right there and seeing the rise of that band has been absolutely incredible. So the fact that you guys have been doing that for so long since the days of MySpace, since the early days of Facebook, and now, you know, MySpace is not really a thing. Facebook is kind of just like for ads and for your grandma to post pictures of <laughs> yeah. things and for, you know, your somebody to spout crazy political nonsense. But you, like Twitter's still there, Instagram's still there. Of course, you still got you got TikTok now, YouTube. If you're able to respond genuinely on all those platforms, you're gonna just continue to create so many great connections and so many great positive reactions with people that like your music, with people that are going to like your music. And I mean, you saw that positive connection from the early days of doing this pay off on those last couple of shows. You keep doing it, it's just gonna keep paying off more and more and more. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, I do. I, uh, I, I, again, pre I preach that because uh, this band is a, is a, is and was a DUI, DIY band, and um, it, it's there's something to be said about finding inspiration and in seeing anybody. You know, like we're just normal dudes. You know, we're another, I am, I'm not nothing special. So, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do this. You know, it, it's a matter of putting the time and effort into it and uh, getting lucky and finding the right people. You know. And also with that, but, you know, inspiring people just to go after what they're passionate about, because if they react so positively with your music, where it makes them feel like themselves, it makes them feel happy, it makes them feel like nothing can really break them from the inside. You know, even if it is music, maybe it's some other form of art, maybe it's some form of business, whatever it might be, if it's going to inspire them to go after that. I mean, that's pretty much that, like the life goal in a way for everyone is find happiness. Like success is relative to happiness. You can be the richest person in the world, but if you're not happy with what you do, then are you really a success in this life? If you're, you know, just playing music, having a good time with your friends, you're enjoying everything about life and you're enjoying your life as it is right now. Who's to say you're not a success in life. Agreed. Agreed. hundred percent. I, I couldn't tell you, uh, just from my experience alone, um, playing in the band, I mean, there's ups and downs, you know, like I, didn't go to college. I went and I worked a job and then wanted to play in a band. So I found that, did that. And then, uh, with the punches went through its course. And then, uh, I got to a point where the band wasn't really doing much anymore and I didn't have a college degree and I got kind of discouraged, you know, like I was like, Oh, my friends around me went to school. They have, they got degrees, they got jobs and stuff. And I was like, what was I going to do? You know? And, if you think about it and look back on it, it's the things that I got to do while being in this band were things that I couldn't even have imagined we could do, you know, like between going to Japan a couple of times and England and then touring the country multiple times and putting out albums and playing all it's, it's just like, I have so many stories. It's not even funny. And I eventually got to where I needed to be, you know, like I now the band is, kind of back in full swing and I have a good job. I went back to school, you know, there's no roadmap that says you have to do this, 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 and this, you know, like do what you love and do it for as long as you can. And sometimes there's going to be bumps in the road. And you know what? The people that persevere are the ones that 
get past those and continue to do the things you love and adjust, you know? So that's kind of what I did. And uh, now I'm in probably one of the better places I've ever been in my life, you know? And it's all because I just let, let it come to me when it was there, you know? I mean, that is fantastic to hear. And it's also just a perfect example of the arc that, you know, no one has that same, goes down the same path that everyone else does. Like no one goes down the same path as somebody else does. Of course, you know, there are those, I would say just kind of like, you know, formal paths that a lot of people go down life where it's like, okay, after high school, it's like you go to college, you get a job, you get married, you have kids, you buy some stuff, you retire, you move to Florida and die, you know, the classic cards against humanity <laughs> card. And I know a lot of people that are doing that and like that's fine. If you're happy doing that, that 100%, is- if that's what you want, go for it. You know, yeah, nobody, is- nobody should tell you otherwise. Exactly. That is perfectly fine. But from your example, it's you found out exactly what you want. It's like you want, want to play music. So you went for it. You found a way to make that happen. And then when the band went into, you know, more of that lull period, it's OK, what am I going to do now kind of thing? And you looked at what was going to make you happy at that point, what was going to be able to drive you at that point, what motivated you. And then you went after it. So now when you're at the point where you kind of have the best of both worlds and you still have all those great stories from the fir- like the first couple of years with the band traveling all over the country, all over the world. I mean, those are stories that a lot of other people that kind of went down, I would say more of that cookie cutter kind of style path are never going to have. Yeah. And at times I'm not going to lie. They'll like tell their stories and then you'll tell your stories and they're more interested in your stories and they might end up daydreaming or even like dreaming at night about some of the stuff that you have done and then putting themselves in that situation because at times they kind of wish they would have followed a little bit of that same path that you had done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and again, I don't think it's, there's ever a time that's too late, you know, like even if you're at this point in life, I'm 35 years old now, you know, like even if you're at this point in life and you've done all that cookie cutter stuff and you're here, you don't have to sit there and go, well, I wish I had done that stuff that he did when he was in his early twenties. It's like, do try it, try doing something, you know, like I went back to school at 30 years old, you know, and, now I have a job in software. You know, I never thought that was going to happen, but like I did it. So, you know, like, oh, you want to start a band at 35 or learn an instrument or do whatever the hell you want to do. Like, don't just sit there and say, hey, I regret that I didn't do this as a teenager or in my early 20s. Do it. If it's, if it's something that you feel strongly about, it doesn't matter how old you are. Like you can start a band as a 65 year old man, you know, like and play bars if that's what you want to do. And it's great. And just do it, you know, like. I don't think there's a time that you you shouldn't still be able to try and accomplish what you want to do that you're passionate about. Oh, absolutely. Just kind of an example of that from the business world. Like look at KFC because Colonel Sanders didn't get KFC going until I think he was in his mid fifties. Like it was just like, there is no time frame on. There's no time limit on. If you're at that age, say you're like 35, 40 years old and you're like, you know, I kind of want to try something a little bit different. I want to try something for a change. Totally go yeah. for it. See what happens because the, the, what the, probably the, the, the second worst thing that could happen is you try it and say, it, you know, you don't like it or say it just doesn't work out right away. Well, at least you try it. The worst thing you can do is not try it all. And then when you're older, say you're like 80, 90 years old, you're sitting in a chair in a nursing home while wheel of fortune is going on with robot pa- Pat Sajak, you know, being, yeah, you know, just watching the whole the time show, you're going to be thinking, what would have happened if I would have tried that? You don't want to live with that kind of regret. Yeah, agreed, hundred percent. And and like for myself, like I can easily, you know, like uh, recognize that, and I can also like you know relate to it as well because that's kind of how the whole podcast started. Where it was, I need, I I hated where I was going in life. I'm like, I need something for myself. I need to start something for myself. Tried a couple of different things, and it ended up leading to this. And I'm just like, I love doing this now, so we're rolling with this. Awesome. That's great. That's, that's exactly that exactly the thing you should be doing. And I think that's like one of the best things to like also like basically talk about. I love talking about bands and all these other artists with this because everyone has a certain focus on finding what it is that makes them happy life going after it and also understanding where, you know, sometimes you might have to have a full-time job to support this stuff as well, but it also kind of plays in that same idea of what we had to get one chance at life. So we're not going to, you know, we're not going to stand at the plate. We get one at that. We're not going to stand at the plate and hope for a walk. No, we're going to try and make something happen. Even if it has to be a bunt single, you know, we're going to try for that swing for the fences. Fuck yeah. We get one chance at this. Why wouldn't we take it? Yep. Agreed. Agreed wholeheartedly. And that was the Ted talk moment of this (laughs) podcast. (laughs) Yeah, that's for sure. So, 
of course, because now again, we talked about where, you know, you're in, you're developing, you're working in software, you're have the band, of course, with, with the punches, you guys are back on it. So what was the decision like to come back after that nine and a half year period? Like what all happened in that to go from, you know, with the punches kind of just not really being around there making music all of a sudden now, okay, discontent EPs out there, you guys are playing shows once again. What was that whole entire story like? So it actually is the full nine and a half years in the making because we stopped playing our, we played our, our quote unquote last shows in 2013. Um, we had released Seams and Stitches, which is our full length album in July of 2012. So it had been out around a year. Um, and at that point we kind of just, we looked at each other and again, at that point in time, I didn't have uh, a degree or anything. Most of us, a uh, bunch of us did, a bunch of us didn't. Um, and we were playing shows and as much fun as it was and amazing as it was, uh, I, I got to the point where I was like struggling to put, to, to pay rent, you know, Strug if I was out for two months on the road, it was like, how am I going to pay rent for the next two months? How am I going to pay my share of my, uh, my bills for the house that I lived with, with my roommates? Like it was, it, it became a struggle. Um, so, um, we came to the decision to, to kind of take a step back at that point, kind of try and figure out personal lives. Um, but there really was never a moment where we didn't think that there was going to be a time that we wouldn't come, that we were, weren't going to come back, you know, like we had started demoing out like um, Stone and Blues, which is uh, the first track on the new EP. That song was demoed out in the... I think it was the fall of 2013 or the, for the spring of 2014. So we, and I mean, it's, it's been through a ton of iterations over the last decade after that. Um, but we had been constantly just like, we use a program called splice, which is um, if everybody has the same digital workspace, cause we all just use garage band on our, on our computers. Um, you can basically record something in garage band and then add everybody to a splice account into a studio and there's like an iteration of a song or an idea or a riff or something. And then when you click on it, you can download it to your digital workspace, add stuff to it and then send it back. And then it'll be iteration two. So it's kind of like, cause we all lived apart now. We used to live somewhat closer, but now everybody's all over the place. So it's been really hard to get together. And that was another challenge we had over those nine and a half years. Um, so splice was a huge thing for us to be able to share ideas and not only uh, critique them but add to them and make full songs by just doing some stuff on our laptops and sending it through over to um to the studio so that other people could check it out and download it you know and um it was really uh, i mean almost all the songs that that are on that ep were, were written that way really and then um occasionally we would uh we'd get together i mean we've always been friends there's ne never a falling out you know it was always just like life got in the way kind of thing so um we got through it um, we all had our trials and tribulations. I'll tell you that in, in that nine year span, but, um, we played a couple shows in 2019. Um, we did like a short little run, um, in August of 2019, kind of similar to what we just did with our CD release shows. We played in New Jersey. We played in, um, Pennsylvania. We played in, um, East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, and then Long Island too. And, um, those were really great shows. And it, 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 had, it was a long time before that, that we actually played live music together for people, you know, not just in a studio room with each other. And um, it felt so good. It felt so good to see people at those shows and, and to play them. And it was it was a really good time to kind of, I think, sparked um, another uh, uh, not the interest, but like gave us that extra push, you know, over the hump. Like we knew that we wanted to release new music and it was always there. And it was always just like, when is it going to happen? But things got in the way. And then after those shows, it kind of gave us that little extra that we needed to get over the hump and say, Hey, we're committed now. We're doing this. We're writing these songs. We're finalizing them and we're going to go to the studio and record them all. So um, we did that. And then um, we finalized all the songs and then we were so happy to get into the studio finally. And for the first time in over a decade, you know, into the studio and we get there in March of 2020. And we all know what happened in March of 2020. Um, so I was in the studio recording drums. Um, I think I only had a couple more songs to do. And I got a call from my wife and so you're like, 
they're shutting down all the state borders because we were recording in, in New York, which is two hours north of me. And I'm in New Jersey. So my wife called me and she's like, uh, we're shutting down. They're shutting down the borders. You need to get home because if you don't, you might get stuck in New York. And I was like, oh, crap. And like had to s- scramble, get all my stuff together and then went back home. And um, and then we didn't do anything f- till we didn't get actually get back into the studio until September. So it was like that whole summer, just like, oh, man, I recorded like a bunch of drums. and We didn't really have much of almost anything else. And um, we finally got back in in September and we were able to finalize everything and get everything done. And then um, it was just a matter of after that, making the song sound great engineering wise and then figuring out what we wanted to do with them. You know, like there was that, OK, now we have this. We have this thing. What are we going to do with it? So um we ended up, I mean, it's a probably get into it a little bit later, a much longer story, but uh, in short, we teamed up with Mutant League and put out this EP, and the rest is history. But uh, that nine years is a long time. I missed music more than anything. I missed playing live music. I missed putting music out. And like I said, uh, the five of us couldn't be happier that we're in the place we are right now. I don't think that the fans would think otherwise. I mean, definitely would have to agree that it, we are happy that you guys are back because that means that you, we've got five guys that are out there that are playing music, doing what they love, and are happy doing what they're doing. I mean, who wouldn't be happy about something like that? And now I understand why you call that night after it's not like it, the, the low period because there was still stuff that was going on there. There was still nothing that was like no blat, bad blood between the band at all. It was just life kept getting in the way different things kept happening you guys had to make sure that you guys were best suited for each of yourselves you know personally financially all that stuff so you could go forward so every time you go on tour you weren't you know freaking out about just okay how am i going to survive the next couple of months after being out on the road how are we going to put this together you want to be able to kind of pull that stress a little bit away from it so you could focus in on you know when it comes to making music the best parts about it. you want to be able to focus in on the fun times you guys are have playing live shows being together making music recording music doing everything around there and yeah those challenges are going to end up kind of but something going back to kind of like you know you always have a chance to do something that you want to do it doesn't matter what time you can do it and just all it matters is you know really working through those potential roadblocks it's there are so many different roadblocks that probably happened within those nine and a half years. I'm, I mean, and of course, the pandemic probably being one of the biggest roadblocks ever, honestly, especially in anyone that's you know was alive and well, you know, we pretty much all were alive during the pandemic at that point. But you know, in the future, people look back to them as like that was one of the biggest roadblocks for everybody. But you guys still were able to push forward. You guys are still able to find a way to make this work so that by the time the EP ended up coming out, you guys were all personally happy, financially stable, and just doing everything you want to do so that you can enjoy this to the utmost. Absolutely. Yep. hundred percent. Couldn't put it better. Yep. Man, I'm going to have to like write that up and be like, okay, so this is like, <laughs> if you want a summary of the nine years and why it worked, here it is. Yeah. 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 It was, uh, like I said, it was hard. It was, uh, it, it, I think it was hard for all of us to be away from music, you know, just cause not that, um, we were doing our thing and stuff, but there's just this energy and this different feeling that happens when the five of us get into a room with our instruments and start playing together, you know, like even just our rehearsing before these shows, um, it's just this, this thing and everybody can feel it. And it just feels so good to do, you know, like it's, it's not something that we are doing because we want people to like, we want to sell a million records or like all this other stuff. We like, we play the music we like because we like it and we have a great time doing it together. And people happen to like that. So we just got lucky, you know, but um, yeah, it's, it's, there's a, there's an energy that comes about being together and playing music together and writing music together, uh, the five of us. So it's, it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool feeling. Like I can easily see the energy that's coming from there, just the way that you're speaking, but also from a live side as well, just seeing how it connects with so many other people and seeing just how everyone is connecting on such a positive like note through music. Because even taking it from you know the non-musician, straight up fan perspective, who will go to any show as much as possible, because anytime I see a monster, I'm just like. <gasps> Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And I just run like head first in there because that's what I like to do. But it was like, of course, with the pandemic and everything shut down, it was like there was that lull. And I kind of I felt something similar where it's just, you know, 
I miss that live music. I miss that connection. I miss that energy. It, it just wasn't the same. Like nothing was it. Of course, you know, you can watch all these different like old concert videos. You can listen to the music. You can put on your headphones. You can turn, you can turn everything up to 11 and try and like reminisce about it. But it's not the same. But that first show I went back to and a mosh pit opened up and I took the first hit. I was just like, oh, I missed this. Yay. Yeah. So like that energy is something that is, it's so positive and so infectious that you just don't want to lose out on that ever. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And that's the feeling you get. I get playing, you know, like I do get that feeling in, in the, I'm older now, so I'm not one that goes in the pit like a ton. If I get a real good energy vibe, I'll, I'll do it. Like I recently saw a Wilhelm scream and come back kid, which are two of my favorite bands from, uh, for forever. And, uh, they played at the, the venue we played in Asbury park. And I, I did go a little bit nuts for the first time in a while, but, um, uh, I do stay, uh, I do tend to stay back now, but yeah, same, same thing. You get that feeling seeing live. There's no other, there's, seeing live music is unlike any other feeling and playing live music is unlike any other feeling. So uh, not having those things between the lull of the band and the pandemic for everybody was is a, a huge loss. And it's really cool that everything is starting to get normalized again and we're back, you know. Oh, absolutely. And now everyone is kind of, especially in the, in the music scene, whether it's live music or, you know, playing live music, whatever it might be, everyone's getting that positivity back. Everyone's getting that just positive emotion back. I think this, so far this year through all of July, I've been, uh, I think maybe 29 shows so far. And it's wow. just like, every time I go, it's just like, there's days that like I wake up, I'm like, Oh, I don't really like, do I want to go to this show? But I'm like, I already know, like by the time I walk in there, by the time the music starts, there's going to be this infectious energy that I'm not going to want to miss out on. So it's like, uh, yep, I'm going. There was even one day I woke up and it was like, I was sick and like my legs were just aching. I could hardly walk. I'm like, there is no way that I'm probably going to be able to go to this show tonight, but there's also no way I'm going to miss out on it because I want that positive. I want that energy. I need it. Yeah. So I still went because, well, that was more important than me, you know, like feeling that positive is more important than me just sitting down and just being like, I wish I was there. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. But also, you know, I, I do enjoy the fact that you said, like, you know, if you get the energy right, you still jump into the pit and have a good time. Yeah. Because it, it just it, it puts sometimes a smile on my it'll face. Get me. It'll come back. I mean, I was uh, I was a maniac when I was younger, you know, my late my late tw- uh, my late teens, early 20s. I I was you couldn't I couldn't go to show without being in the pit. So um, sometimes if I feel if feeling the right vibes, I'll do it. Yeah. But um, now that I'm older, I have like back aches and stuff like that. So it's just like, yeah. All right. I got to ask you this to this day. What is the craziest pit you have ever been in? So, so, I mean, I've been to a bunch of, I mean, my fair share of metal shows. Uh, I played in a metal band back in my teenage years and stuff, but, um, so I've been to a lot of good metal pits. I know, um, I saw, uh, kill switch engage and on earth play at Starland ballroom here, which uh, was always amazing. I've seen them a couple of times, Lamb of God and Slayer. Um, but I surprisingly not, I mean, not, maybe not surprisingly, but the best pit I ever saw and I was ever in was in 2007. It was the summer before I turned 21. So I was 20 years old. Um, I think it was called rock the bells in on Randall's Island in New York city. And it was basically a mostly rap concert. Like it was, uh, Cypress Hill played public enemy played Wu-Tang Clan was there. Um, a lot of cool, cool hip hop and rap artists. And the headliner was rage against the machine. And it was the coolest thing because the crowd was humongous and it was the ground. It had rained that morning. So it was in a field. So the ground was like this kind of muddy, grassy mud pit thing. And they didn't go on till they headlined. So they went on late and it was dark and they shut off all the lights in the entire place and then slightly the lights slightly started going on and then all you could hear you couldn't even i couldn't even see the stage from where i I mean i could see the stage but because it was so dark we couldn't see anything that was happening on the stage and then all of a sudden i just heard like the and then when Zach De La Roca came in with the come with it now, the lights all blew up and the pit just opened up like bigger than I had ever seen. And it was just 
people went berserk. It was the coolest thing. I was only 20. I couldn't even drink at the time. And it was just like the coolest thing ever. It was like probably one of the best shows I've ever been to. It was, it was amazing. And just like, again, if you're talking energy, it was just like you, the energy was just palpable. Like you could feel it like just flowing through that crowd. It was amazing. You're making me insanely jealous right now because I'm just like, I need that. Like, I need something like that, man. Oh, man. It was the coolest. It was the coolest. I'll remember that for a long time. I mean, I'm just like, just picturing my head too, just kind of just, you know, you know, entered a balls on parade and all of a sudden just the light flashes and this giant pit opens up in the, in like a pit of like mud too. Yeah. It was like, I, during the day they were having like these, like their mud wrestling things where like people were just like drinking and like doing whatever and they would made a huge circle around a pile of mud and people were just like having fun and mud wrestling. It was crazy, but it was, it was awesome. It was amazing. And it's like the people that were mud wrestling there too. It's like they were doing it and probably, you know, going nuts, like, you know, absolutely crazy mud wrestling. And then of course, you know, once they're done, it's like, okay, we're done. They're probably handshaking, high five, oh, yeah. hugging oh, yeah. each there other. Oh yeah. There was no fighting. It was just like all in good fun kind of thing. Oh yeah. It's like afterwards, like you look at each other like, ah, that was fun. You want to go grab a beer? Yep. Let's go. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the, that's the way to go. And like, that's one thing, like, especially when people look like that I talk to, especially like my full-time job, there's very few people that understand like why I love mosh pit so much. And like, they don't get the idea behind it, but it's always just because, you know, that's a way for us to like, let out that energy, let out that anger, let out that aggression, just feel that music in the moment, the way we like to feel it. But, and you think it might look like chaos, which at times it absolutely can be. But always watch what happens at the end of the song. No matter what song it is, people are high fiving each other, hugging each other. Everyone's talking, having a great time, and everyone's smiling. It's just, why would we do this if we didn't feel the most utmost like positive energy from doing yeah, something like this? One hundred percent. Yeah, even when I was a kid, my teenage years, we would jump in pits. I, I mean, I specifically remember like I saw a show at the Stone Pony in Asbury, and it was um, "Most Precious Blood" strike anywhere in AFI, and um i remember going to that show and getting smashed in the face my nose was i was just gushing blood and people would fall down and people would just stop everything and pick you up like yeah you got hit and stuff sometimes but it was also just like this nobody wanted to actually hurt anyone you know it wasn't like we're intentionally going in there to punch people in the face you know and i just remember i was like i was probably 16 or 17 years old at that show and I came out, my mom picked me up from the stone pony outside and she was like, what happened to you? And I would just had a big shit eating grin on my face with the blood, dried blood all over my face. And I was just happy. And it was just like, I did. It was just like that. And like you said, that energy, that feeling, that community of punk, punk, hardcore, whatever you want to call it. Like it just gave me, and I know uh, most of the people in our, my band, um, that feeling that you you get hit in the face a bunch of times and it's just still the, the, the best day ever, you know? Yeah, like I've been to shows where one time I got my, it was like under my eyebrow, it got completely split open when I fell down the pit and someone was picking me up and some dude fell down head to head contact. And I looked, I was like, I looked at him like, dude, get me out of here. And it was like, the reason I was so fierce, like I knew I was bleeding all over the place. I didn't want to put like get blood all over like the floor. I'm like, get me out of here. Cause that's like, that's a hazard. Yeah. And after, after I forgot to the bathroom, he's like, dude, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Man. I'm like, no, I was just going to need to get me out of there so that we could like take care of this. Like, I understand what's going on. I'm like, I'm fine. Dude, yeah. Don't worry. Oh, you, I, you signed the, the, the fictional <laughs> waiver, you know, that says like, I'm in the pit. I <laughs> sign off on this. What could happen? You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I had some of the best times of my life in a, in a crowd, in a pit, in a, at a show, you know? I know that for me, it's like, even I'm 27. I'm like, I still go into these things head first. I'm like, I know there's going to come a point in time where I'm like, I'm just not going to want to go in them anymore. But I'm like, if I want to go in them as many times as I can right now, I'm going to maximize that amount of time because that's where I, I, I just find so much happiness in doing that kind of stuff that I'm just not going to stop doing it until all of a sudden it gets to the point where I'm like, I don't really want to do this anymore when I'm in, yeah. when I'm like in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I still get that feeling too. I'm 35 at this point. Like most of the time I don't, I'm usually the guy watching the show from the back, you know, but uh, there, there are occasions where I, I get that little, that itch, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Um, so, now I, have to come out to- I wake up the next day and don't feel as good anymore as I used to when I was in my twenties, but I, I'll still, still do it on occasion. So we have to find a show that's going out in New Jersey. Just show up and all of a sudden just find a song where all of a sudden I feel like, you know, you're going to get that energy. You're going to jump in the pit. I'm just going to look and be like, 
dude. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Wham. <laughs> yep. Do it. Just for the fun of it. Now I want to jump a little bit into the discontent EP. So of course, like you guys said, you've been working on this stuff, you know, a lot of these demos for, I mean, basically ever like since, you know, your last live show in 2013, putting these together on GarageBand through Splice and then everything that happened with the pandemic when you're tracking this stuff. So when it came to the overall like inspiration behind this whole entire EP, especially with it, you know, being a decade in the making, what was that whole entire inspirational process like to get these songs, you know, worked on constantly working on them to change up from like the initial demo to where they came to the final product. And then also the inspiration to keep going and keep tracking this stuff. Of course, once you were tracking those drums and then March of 2020 hit. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, Again, I think, like I said before, the, the the inspiration was always there, you know, like it was always we knew it was going to come back at some point. Like once we we said whatever hiatus, Dustin likes to call it a nap. We took a long nap. Uh, but that all like that entire time frame, we knew that something was going to happen again. It was never a, hey, this band's not doing anything anymore. We're done. We're broken up. And then maybe there's a possibility we could get back together because there was never a, a, a breakup. So um, musically, at least there is a lot of stuff flowing all the time. The inspiration was always there. We loved this band. We wanted to continue to make music um, lyrically and, and content wise. It, it did take a lot more than, than just that. Um, Jesse, uh, our singer, he's an amazing lyricist. Um, I mean, we love him as our singer. Um, he, went through a lot of rough stuff, you know, during that nine year period. And um, he can be very critical of his, uh, his work. And a lot of the times um, we'd get through some ideas and he'd just be like, Hey guys, you know, like, I, I, I don't feel it. Like I'm not feeling this thing. Um, so it was, it was definitely a trial, you know, to go through that. And then um, once we like, once those shows happened in 2019 and, and again, there'd been lyrical ideas floating around everywhere. We kept everything in folders. And so we had, these ideas on paper and stuff like that. And um, once we played those shows, like I said, there was a little bit of a, a spark again that uh, ignited that fire a little bit more than it had, had been dwindling. Um, and Jesse kind of threw together all of the, the emotions and the things that he had experienced over that nine years. Um, and basically said like the, the content for this EP was around and I mean the name of the album is discontent and there's a reason because there's a lot of points in time in that nine year period where not only him but us as people were discontent with what was going on but but the point of it isn't to let the discontent sit and and stew within you and stop you from doing things it's it's hitting the discontent because you know you're everybody hits it you know like there's not a single soul alive that's going to get through their entire life and be completely content with everything they've ever done so there's always going to be that point where you hit this this moment of discontent or these moments of discontent and the key is to use them as learning experiences and stepping stones to get to the next place that you want to be and i think that was what the real message behind the entire album was is that Hey, he's been through some stuff. We've, we've been through some stuff and we aren't going to lie and tell you that everything has been fabulous and great for the last nine years, because that's not true. Um, but it hasn't stopped us from living the lives or pursuing the lives that we want and making new music and following the passions that we have as individual people and as a band together. So um, those songs really mean a lot to us because it shows that we went through some shit and now we um, we're back and we're, we're still going and we're um, in a better place than we have ever been before, you know? No, absolutely. And it's just, even when I was going through the EP too, just of course the name of it being discontent that pretty much kind of sets up that idea of what it's going to be about. But then one thing I always like to do is like, I'm going to listen to every single song. I'm going to try and figure out what the mean of the song is to kind of see how everything gets put into place. And like the, you listen, you go through the lyrics and you, you know, you pick, you start looking at the metaphors and seeing how it relates to you and see where that core like emotion comes in. And there's a lot of different things coming through here about just, you know, moments of discontent and those moments that happen in life that can potentially take you down or potentially mess with your mind and potentially, you know, take you off track, mess with your happiness, whether it's, 
you know, you, you feel like you should act, you feel like you want to be one way, you be like how you are on the inside. But on the outside, it's like your actions, your words are not matching up with that. And you're just constantly trying to say, you know, okay, the next time I got this, the next time I got this, and you keep falling in that same pattern of going back and forth, could be trouble with some sort of a relationship. Could There's so many different things in life that could go wrong that just could, could potentially keep make you discontent and ruin any sort of motivation for you to go after what you want to go after. But I'm trying to, I got to scroll down and really pick out the song I really picked this up on. And it was the fourth one. It was almost everything. And this one kind of was like the one that I thought would have been like the, like the, is the best one to kind of talk about it in a way where it puts a little bit of a different spin on it. It looks, it takes more positive spin on everything where, you know, trying to change your mindset in life about just dis being discontent and pessimism in order to live life more to the fullest in the present and not let all those things that happened in the past constantly affect what's happening in the present. Where of course, you know, experiences are going to end up affecting how you think and how you feel in the present, but it's not letting them control you in that sort of a way. Talk about how it isn't too late to do the like things and to catch up on that like time that you miss. Of course, you're not going to be able to make up the time that you miss, but you're going to be able to go forward and say, this is the amount of time I have left, or however it might be. Let's make this time the best time possible. I'm never going to be able to, you know, go back and fix what happened there, but let's take what I can control and focus in on that. So it takes sort of that discontent and use it as motivation to make the best for yourself going forward from this point. Yep, absolutely. Yep, 100%. And I think that like, especially if from your style of music, it's something where the energy that's being put behind it as well, it really brings forward that sort of an inspirational message. And it's something that everyone can relate to because we've all gone through things in life where no one's life has been perfect. No, There's been points in time in life, you know, Think about, you know, every single kid that's ever been in grade school or middle school or high school. They've done something where it kind of went against what they like to do just so that they would fit in with whatever was popular, whatever, you know, was cool at the time. I mean, I I, I can say I'm I, I fell to that as well when I was in like fourth, fifth and sixth grade. Like I only really listened to the music that was popular at the time because I wanted to fit in. Then Guitar Hero came out, and then I'm like, yeah, that's kind of not the way to go about it. So thank you, Guitar Hero, for that one. But just kind of everyone's able to relate to that at some point where I'm not able to go back and, you know, enjoy the music that I enjoyed when it first was coming out, like 2004, 2005, 2006. But I can enjoy everything now and go yeah. forward and find that happiness that way. There's nothing wrong with discovering and uh, getting into things that have been around for a while, be just because they've been around for a while, doesn't mean that they're not awesome anymore. You know, I live in nostalgia sometimes and play records from 2001 to through 2006 all the time. Like I, I get into those modes. Um, I do, I do like a lot of the newer, newer stuff that's coming out. And, um, but yeah, I, I definitely live in, in somewhat of a nostalgic, uh, music phase sometimes. So, uh, so I, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, especially when it comes to music as well, because when you listen to that stuff that came out from, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, however long it might be, there's always going to be some sort of like, it, it kind of like a time travel feel in a way where you're going back to how you felt when you like were listening to it, when you felt strong, most strongly connected to that music, to that song. And you're bringing forward all the positive emotions you had back once again. So you're kind of able to go back and take a look at that. I mean, there's bands that I listen to like, like I'll listen to um, I'll, I'll throw this I'll listen to Van Halen's Foreign Lawful Carnal Knowledge album from 1991, and I'll listen to one song specifically. It's "The Dream Is Over," and the reason is because that's the first song I have any cognitive memory of. I remember okay. going to the basement with my dad, and my brother. My dad had those old like tower speakers, like that old like gigantic like stereo system that was always like the, like those the absolute rage in the 80s and the 90s. Put in the CD, play the dreams over, and he crank it all the way up. And I'd be like two years old, like air guitaring the shit out of it, trying to be Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, but it's like yeah, I mean, but there's like nothing else that does that. I mean, in my opinion, like music is the only real thing that can give you that sort of nostalgic connection to things, like where you can remember things that you would necessarily other otherwise wouldn't remember. But music makes that connection. And I think that's why music is so powerful. Like it can spark such emotion. It can spark memories. It's it's there's like this whole part of your brain that's just it's developed to just take that in, you know, and, and receive that and keep it. Um, I, and that's, I think, a, a reason why uh, I gravitated to music at such a young age, too. Like it's just something that, again, brings back memories, makes me remember the 
the hat, some of the happiest moments of my life. And um, yeah, I mean, between ener the energy that music can, to, can give you and the nostalgia or, or uh, reminiscence of, of what it can help you remember, it's a, it's a super powerful thing. Oh, absolutely. And then even jumping back into discontent as well, just to bring it back to that point where, again, you know, it, music brings forward, you know, the reminiscing of so many different happy moments, so many different positive moments, but could also do the same thing in a negative light too. But it depends upon how you look at it and where the meaning comes from. Like taking a look at some of the songs that are on discontent, of course, for when, um, just want to make sure I get his name right, for when Jesse end up writing these for lyrically, you know, they're going to relate to some potential robots, potential dark times in life that you had to end up getting past where you maybe lost your motivation, lost your happiness, and felt like, you know, maybe things weren't going very well and you were losing yourself in that moment. But of course, just the way the style of the music that you guys do with this more pop punk style that has more of a dynamic range to it, and then you get to almost everything where it kind of has this feeling of, you know, those things happened. Yeah, they, they happened and it wasn't good, but see where you've come from now and you're not going to be able to change those, but you're going to be able to use those as motivation to make the most for the rest of your life and make the most out of it. So again, you're not going to be able to go back and fix what you did in the past, but you can focus on the present, you can focus on the future and make the rest of the time you have here the best possible time you can. Yep, yep, exactly. And it's just like, it's, it's weird because again, you know, we were talking about music related to the past. Now it's like music inspiring the future at the same time as well. It can do the exact same thing in the exact same song. And it's just, that's the beauty of it. Yep. Yeah. Interpretation is a huge thing in music too. Yeah. Because you can hear the same, 10 people can hear the same thing and interpret it 10 different ways. So that's another, another reason why it's such a, a cool thing, you know? Oh, absolutely. And then when it came to, of course, you know, tracking this up and recording this stuff, was there an issue when it came to trying to get back into the swing of things and record this stuff from when you were tracking drums in the studio and then March 2020 hits the pandemic hits and you guys had that six month left until you could get back in the studio? Was there any kind of oddities that happened there in terms of trying to, you know, recapture those feelings, recapture those emotions in terms of being able to play just to make sure that these songs stood out as much as they did? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if um, oddities is the right word, but like there was a lot of, uh, back and forth on like hey we, i know we recorded this thing but is that the right thing we should do do should we re-record the drums for this thing should we just redo everything all together like that was a huge thing and we had months to stew on that kind of stuff you know because it was just like brendan who uh recorded the album for us is a close friend of ours um he was like i my parent his parents were older you know he didn't want to put them at risk you know with uh with covid if he got it you know and he li was living with them at the time so it was just like um it was hard like to to try we couldn't do anything like i couldn't we none of us obviously you know we couldn't really leave our houses at that point so it was just hard and we just continue to talk about stuff but not be able to change anything you know that's the worst part is that like you have this thing you can hear part of it you know what you've done so far but there's nothing you can do about it now so it's just one of those things where you continue to like think about it and then you overthink things and then it's just like I need to just take a step back and like, let it be what it is. And we got back into the studio in uh, September. So it was at least like uh, five months off from when we, we left the studio, you know, six months. Um, and um, it, it started off a little rough. I would say we, we, I started recording more drums and it was, it felt off a little bit, but then we got everybody in the studio. And once everybody was there, um, I think there's just this thing like when we just hanging out, you know, with the five of us, it's just like it, you always flip that switch of, Oh, okay. I remember why I do this again, you know, like, so even though it was a little rough at the, at first, um, once everybody got together and hung out for those few days that we ended up uh, tracking all the, the instruments, it, it kind of just came right back, you know, and then, and then that actually made decisions a lot easier, you know, like it made decisions like uh, what, what were we going to do at this part? And it was like, Oh, well, we, we just got together. We were talking about it over dinner. And now we were talking about this thing and everybody would be like, yes, that's awesome. Let's do that. So um, yeah, it's, it's uh, something that um, really was, was not the easiest thing to do. Um, I don't recommend going into the studio for a couple of days and then waiting six months to go back in and record everything else. But um, yeah, it ended up being positive. I mean, again, uh, I can't commend the four other dudes in this band enough. They are uh, some of my favorite people to be around. And whenever we get into a, a room together, it's always uh, 
good things happening. And just the fact that you guys are able to like get that chemistry back, you know, after again, recording stuff for three days, then the pandemic hits and then having to wait six months and getting everyone back in studio and then being able to build back up on that chemistry so that during that time when you guys are constantly like, you know, we can't change anything, but we have, you know, maybe we should try this, maybe we should do this, but you can't really do anything about there. You're trying to make sure that that works. All of a sudden being back in there, the chemistry and this, everything is flowing once again. Now you're hitting on everything, hitting on all cylinders to the point where it, it like the EP comes out the way that it did. It comes out as strong as it does. It comes out as dynamic as it does to the point where people are listening to it. And then, you know, right from the first five seconds, like of the first song, you're absolutely hooked, like hook, line and seeker into the whole entire thing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that was a goal, but uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that uh, people are receiving it as well as, as and it's, been, it's been received. You know, it's a really cool thing. Well, the reason I said, like, you know, the first five seconds of the first song will have you in hook, line, and sinker because that's pretty much what happened with me. It's like, all right, let's play the first one. Let's play Stone and Blues. Okay, let's see what happens. After five seconds, I'm just like, okay, I'm in. This is like, I need to listen to this whole entire thing just based off of, like, the intro of that song. I'm just like, how the hell did you guys come up with that? Because it was like pop punk meets, like, fast-paced power metal. I was like, what the? Yeah, I mean, Yo! Our, our guitar players are both incredibly good dustin and Vinny. uh Vinny is a machine he if you tell him to play a song he'll just be able to play it he's just like that talented at playing guitar and he comes from playing metal stuff that's it's his uh his first love is metal so you can obviously hear that there's some of that in those riffs and in that speed and um that we play at but we've always been about playing playing fast and giving giving as much energy to, to each song as possible so um yeah it, it the diverse backgrounds of playing music and, and what we used to play when we were younger um, kind of contribute to the overall sound of the band as it is now, you know? Oh, absolutely. Cause that was the thing that freaked me out right away from the first moment. It was just absolute positive. I'm like, this is, it kind of like broke apart, like any sort of premonition you could ever have about with the punches. Even if you haven't heard them, it's like, okay, you see fast pop punk. Okay. Let's see what's going to go on here. And you open with that. It's just, I mean, I had like, at that point I was, unsure of what to expect for the rest of the EP, but I was so excited to see what was going to about to happen just based off of that initial intro, Son of Blues. That's again, it, it had me hooked right from the get go. Cause it was so different. It was so dynamic, but it was such a breath of fresh air in terms of whatever my mind would have even thought about. Like I, I didn't know what to say. I was thrown off guard in the best way possible. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's exactly what uh, the goal was <laughs> to get that reaction out of people. So I'm glad that uh, that happened to you. See, it's like I'm looking like I'm looking forward to the point in time where I can see this song play live. And all of a sudden, you know, everyone's getting into it. Everyone's bouncing around. Everyone's having a good time. All of a sudden that opened like you guys open with that. Next thing you know, big giant circle pit happened. I'm just going to be in the middle of it going like. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's definitely a circle pit song. We actually played that. song. we opened with that song a lot, the, the four shows that we played. Um, it's fun. It's definitely a fun. Gets the energy going right off the bat, you know. Oh, absolutely. So I'm, I'm basically what you're saying is I got to make sure that. I bring, I get to talk to all my friends I know, especially if they're here, or take them down to Chicago, make sure all the people that are, I always see in the pit, it's like, okay, when they come on right from the get go, trust me, we're going to get this thing going like literally as this starts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe I'll convince someone to bring a banana costume too, just because, you know, that also is kind of funny to see the guy in the banana costume in a, in a, in a mosh pit, just because, well, who doesn't want, who doesn't want to see the banana guy? I'm, I'm game for that. That's always fun. That's, that's the goal. You know, like that's the main thing. It's like, have, have fun. I mean, that's what we want to show that's the more people move around and, and you can visibly see that they're having fun. The more we vibe off of it, you know, the more energy I can feel uh, playing the music, you know? So that's uh, I mean, that's always been a thing with, with the band too. Like, again, uh, we, we love playing shows in smaller places too, because that intimacy and that even even shows without stages like that's an amazing i love that because people can get right in your face jump on jump on jesse jesse's out on people throwing the mic out in people's faces like it's it's that's the vibe of the band you know that's what we are we, we want people to think that they're part of the band that they're with us doing this thing because we wouldn't be doing it without these people so that's the energy we try to bring and receiving that back only makes us feel better and play better you know so then we guys get we got to get you guys out to Milwaukee to play a venue here called X Ray Arcade because I've seen a couple of shows there. Um, I believe they're also on Mute League Records with you guys with the band Belmont. I've seen yeah. them there, 
And literally, it's like, it, it looks like you walk in there, it looks like, you know, like a, like a normal Midwestern bar. But then it's like, they got the venue connected to it, and you walk back there, and it literally looks like just like an old punk rock venue where it's, there is a stage, but there is no barricade in front of the stage. So what, like, whoever's in the front row, like, you're literally right neck, like, you're up against the stage. Like, there's nothing guarding you. So yeah. I've seen bands jump into the crowd. I've seen Super, uh, Super Americans, uh, their bases jumped into the pit with us during their last song. I'm like, oh, this is nice. People, like, jumping up on stage, you know, stage diving, all that kind of stuff. All this stuff is yeah. going on to the bring the energy. So I'm like, now I got to I gotta find a way to help you guys get to a venue like that here oh, in Milwaukee. Yeah. So that we can experience this ourselves. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So I guess that also leads to the question now, what's going to be the future for, uh, with the punches going forward in terms of, you know, specifically the live show aspect of it. Cause you guys got the EP, you guys are playing live music. You guys are fully back into the swing of things. So what's the live show outlook look like for you guys? So, um, I think we're going to end up, I know, um, there's a lot of stuff going on already. I mean, play shows, book tours, book up, super fast nowadays especially that music's back and everybody's trying to go on tour again now that covid is uh, subsided not that it's subsided but that we're more okay with playing live music in this this world that we live in now um so i think we're gonna try and concentrate on um getting together uh for the rest of this year and uh continuing to write more demos write more music you know get, get ready for something something else you know in the, in the f- not so distant future um, and then next year, I think we really want to, we have some things in the works. Um, we're trying, but, um, we're, I, at this point in our lives, we're all in our thirties, you know, like mid, mid to later thirties. Um, and we, um, it's, it, it, it's not super feasible for us to be like, Hey, we're going to drop everything and go on tour for two months. You know, like we all have full-time jobs that might not be the smartest thing for us anymore. Mike has three kids. Then he's got one kid. So it, it is a little bit harder. But with that being said, we are going to do our best to get ourselves back out there um, in some capacity, in way, shape, or form. I can't guarantee that uh, I know what that capacity is yet, but I will promise you that we are going to do our best to get to wherever we can um, to play shows. You know, like, again, I have we have some things that are um, gears that are working in the background right now um, that could help facilitate this kind of stuff. But um I, I promise that there will be more shows. I just can't guarantee in what kind of capacity that will be, but expect there to be with the punches playing live shows in the year 2023. See, now I take a look at that. And I think I totally understand where you're coming from too. It's you guys have, you got, you guys have your own things going on in your personal lives, you know, career wise. And of course, when you have families and you have kids in the mix too, that is going to also, you know, not allow you guys to just say, all right, let's go on tour right now. Okay, you know, we're just going to drop it. Two weeks from now, we're just going to drop everything. We're going to go out for two and a half months, and that's going to be it. So I totally understand where you're coming from, where that does add a little bit more of a uh, kind of like a logistical um, maze to navigate in a way because you want to yep. make sure that you're satisfying your needs and your um, obligations for your family, for your careers, everything like that. But you also want to go out and play shows too. So We'll just have to wait and necessarily see, you know, where that's going to be, when that's going to be. But the thing that makes me the happiest is we know that it's not an if, it's a when. Exactly. Yeah. It's that's that's just the, that's the point I want to throw out there is that while it's hard for me to tell you what capacity this will come in, I promise that it will happen. You know, it's going to happen. We are going to play more live shows and we are going to put out more music. That's both of those things are. 100 percent set in stone that's those are both going to happen uh and it because it's early in the in the game right now like i said there are things in the works um i can't really give you because i don't have a clear idea of what it looks like either so when we do um for sure everybody will know um but uh the one thing that i i do want to reiterate is that both both live shows and more music will happen in the future they will happen in the future. Not a matter of if, if it's a it's a matter of when. And the thing that makes me most excited about that too now is just the way that you were talking about it. There was just this certain kind of positivity and energy in your voice where it's like, there this is some exciting stuff that's gonna be that's gonna be happening. So are you gonna wanna miss out on it? And the answer is <laughs> hell no. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we're excited. We're we're really excited. I mean, again, the because of the how well received the album is 
has been how great our energy has been getting back together, how amazing everybody that's helped put this record out between uh, Brendan who recorded it, between everybody who supported us, our families and everything. And then between everybody at Mutant League and, and, and Earshot and all those people that work together, um, uh, Nate, uh, who uh, runs Mutant League, he's one of the best dudes we've worked with uh, as a band. And I could not give any more, I couldn't say any better things about them. They're just awesome people that work at that label. They do great at what they do. And they've really given us a chance to thrive and, and to put this out in front of as many people as we possibly could, you know. And I mean, it's, it's, it's working. I mean, I ended up making across, like literally shot across my phone screen. It's like, okay, I got to go back to that and see, like, go scroll back up. I got to see what that was. So definitely doing a good job on that front along with your social media game as well. So, you know, two big thumbs up on that one, of course. And of course, with Mutant League being out of Chicago as well, I'm assuming at some point in time in 2023, you know, when it comes to playing a show, you're probably going to want to make it out to the Midwest, make it out to the Chicago area so you can see all the guys at Mutant League, see all, ever, all the family at Mutant League, and then get a show together so everyone can go, go see them. And if that's the closest show to me, I'm just going to have a big smile on my face because I'm like, I can make it there. Let's go. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, well, there'll be, there'll be shows out there. Yeah. I, I, again, yeah, like the guys uh, at Mutant League are in Chicago. So uh, they, we will definitely be back out to at least Chicago and hopefully more more Midwest places too. We we have so many places to hit that we have not hit in so many years. Uh, the West Coast, um, Jesse and Dustin lived in Austin, Texas for many years before the band was uh, a band back in the early, uh, mid 2000s. And uh, they always gave us a great, warm welcome when we can we haven't been there in 10 10 years more than that so uh we got a lot of places to hit and we're and we're gonna do it it's just uh, a matter of uh like you said logistically how it's gonna work but uh yeah we're gonna do our best to get to every single place that uh that people want to see us play you know yeah so well I, I can guarantee you one thing the midwest come on over we want to see you play live hell yeah let's do it Hell yeah. So Shane, as we bring this podcast to its conclusion, one thing I always like to do is give you a chance to say whatever you want to say, plug whatever you want to plug, promote whatever you want to promote at the end of the podcast. So Shane, floor is yours. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know it's been a theme throughout the, the, the chat that we've been having, but um, yeah, I, I just want to say that the reason this band is a band is because of the people that listen to this band and give us the, the energy and the vibes that uh, we try to give out to them. And uh Continue to follow every single passion you have. I know it, it gets hard. You can see we didn't put out music for 10 years um, and we're here back and doing it. People are receiving it as well as it, it's been received. And uh, I, like I said, if I can do it, then anybody can do it. So don't ever give up on what you want to do. Even if you have to do tons of other stuff to get there, it might not happen immediately, but do what you love. And uh the community that uh, has has come together for us and, and just in in music and in like this punk rock, what a hardcore, even metal music scene, just keep it, it alive. Go to your local venues, see all the shows, support local music. It's such a cool thing. And bigger bands don't get found unless you go see them play when they're nobodies, you know, like go to shows. When I was a kid, I used to get dropped off at the venue without even knowing who the bands were there, you know, like just go to shows go support local music, go listen, go buy music on Bandcamp, go support bands, go buy merch. You know, we need to help cultivate this music scene and continue to, to push people to want to play music and to continue to aspire to be in positions of those that they, uh, that they look up to, you know? So none of that happens without starting at the lowest level and supporting your local music scene and your local venues and your local bands, you know? So um, that's a, that's a huge thing. And that's a reason why with the punches is even where we are now, you know? So, um, again, that's, I couldn't put more emphasis on that. Um, go, go support, uh, local music and follow your passions. You know, I don't think good to put it any other way, but now it's time for me to end this podcast with three very separate things. So the first things first, as Jane had talked about, you know, you're going to want to support your local music scene. You're going to want to cultivate this great positive scene so that so many other bands want to play music. And so that so many other people want to get out there, be a part of this and create this whole entire family where, you know, in your local scene, those small bands, they can become the biggest bands. Who knows? Maybe there's some band that's playing at your local venue right now that is about to become as big as Bring Me the Horizon in the next 10 years. You never know, but 
Go and support them. Go and give them a shot. You never know what might happen. And when it comes to with the punches, you're going to want to, you know, go and listen to their music and see them live and follow along with all their stuff as well. So you're going to want to find them on social media because if you're going to, you know, send a message to them, you know, you're going to get a personal message right back. And it's going to be something that you're going to really, really just be like, oh, they messaged me back and it's personal. Like that, you're gonna get that positivity there. So you're gonna want to follow them on all their social media accounts. You're gonna to want to subscribe to their YouTube channel so you can watch any kind of music videos that are out there from this extent or from the past as well. On top of that, you're gonna to want to find a way to stream, buy, download, you know, perks, whatever it might be, the EP disconnect. On top of that, you're gonna to wanna to follow along with them too, because you know, we talked about this. Live shows are not an if, it's a when. So you're gonna to want to know when that happens. And you're going to want to potentially, you know, help these guys out, buy some merch. Who doesn't want a with the punches shirt? I mean, I want one. So instead of having to go and search all this stuff up yourself, let me do the work for you. Description of the podcast, say find with the punches online. Links for socials, website, merch, where you can stream their music, find their music, everything around there. And the associated links there. So all you have to do is click, like, click, share, click, subscribe, click, listen, click, buy, all that kind of stuff. I'm making it a two-click thing for you guys. I'm doing all the research. All you got to do is click. So... Go do that and support with the punches. Now it's time for number two, Shane. So whenever I'm guessing the podcast, I absolutely enjoy having the podcast. I tend to make a certain promise and it's a way to say thank you on the podcast. And I want to continue to support the band as much as possible. So this is something that happens. This has been a consistent thing for every episode I've done. And you're continuing this street band. Like you're continuing this on. So I can't start this out with an if because... Like with those shows, like that little pipe, it might not happen. No, 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 no. We're going to start out with when because it's going to happen. We just don't know the date or the time yet. So when I get to see you perform live for the first time with With The Punches, sir, my promise to you is this. First round's on me. We'll take that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, cool. And I Perfect. can't wait. Like, like you said, I can't wait to get back out there, come out and see everybody. You know, like, again, we had such great uh, responses at these four shows, but there are so many places that, uh, people that can't make trips that are super far sometimes for whatever reasons, you know, so we're going to try to get to all of you guys so that everybody has the chance to come hang out with us and, and see, see the live show. So, um, like you said, it's not a, and if it's a win, it's not an, if it's a when, and that promise is not an, if it's a when and hold me to it, man, because love to buy you a drink. So first round's on me. Just going to awesome. say that once again. Appreciate so that. as we bring this podcast to inclusion, I could not in good conscience end this by saying goodbye because goodbye implies, you know, like this is kind of like final. It's like, that's it. It's done. And I can't do that because one, I made a promise to you. I will see you play live and first rounds on me. So I got to, I, and I want to continue to support the band as much as possible. Plus in the future, I would love to have you back on the podcast once again. So can this be goodbye? Nah, this is going to yeah. be. See you later. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, well, folks, this has been an interview with Shane from the band With The Punches. Hoo-wah, hoo-wah, hoo-wah. Once again, please go and support With The Punches on all their social media accounts. Go follow along with them because they're going to be coming back and playing live shows some point in the future. We just don't know the dates and times, but we know what's happening. We know more stuff's coming out. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. And if you like pop punk, you like that fast break, you like to be inspired, you like to have that like confidence, yeah, you're going to want to listen to With The Punches. So go follow them on all their social media Go subscribe to their YouTube channel. Go, you know, find their website. Go buy some merch. Go listen to Discontent EP. Buy it, stream it, download, whatever it might be. And you can do so by going to the description of the podcast. Find where it says With the Punches Online. All the links and labels for all those places are going to be there. I did all the research for you. So now, all you have to do is click. Please also remember to follow along with the Corporate Rush Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well. I think you're most active on Instagram, but you know, we'd always do the fun TikTok shorts, like Supercuts of the Podcast. Um, but you can reach out to us on all those platforms. Join us on the Wednesday live streams every night at every Wednesday night, I should say, at 9 p.m. Central. Also, please make sure to subscribe for the Corporate Progression Podcast on YouTube or on Spotify, Podcast, iRadio, Amazon, or wherever you might be getting your podcast. If you're already subscribed, thank you! If you're, just, or if you're just subscribing now, thank you. Let me get a drink on that one. Really went with a big one on that one. If you're not subscribed to the podcast, you're like, oh, I don't want to subscribe. Please reconsider, sir. Armado. But again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for uh, enjoying this podcast with, with the punches as well. I do want to thank our support for this podcast. Once again, remember, manscaped get 20 percent off and free shit by using our code cpp at manscaped.com the boxers 2.0 the lawnmower 4.0 trust me below the belt care for you guys 
Manscaped's got you covered. Also, remember, we are sponsoring the Way We Were Hungry Music Festival happening out in Las Vegas, October 20th and 21st of 2022. Pancakes in the Pit, Memes and Dreams, tickets on sale now at WeHungryFestival.com. The link is in the description of the podcast for you. Go get your tickets. Come find me in the pit. Pancakes in the Pit, Memes and the Dreams, baby. Thank you, Shane, for being on the podcast. This was incredible. Can't wait to see you play live. Can't wait to get that energy going. And remember, first round's on me, bud. On that note, that's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to the Core Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of the big, healthy, and hearty. See ya! Yep. Yeah.